Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Anybody that's been working on LS engines or specifically an LS head for any length of time at all has come across that broken exhaust manifold bolt that's always seems to be present. We all know how to pretty much fix that. If not, there's lots of videos that do show how to fix it. Uh, with the welder, it's fairly quick. But what about if that head has more problems? For example, stripped exhaust manifold bolts, or in my case, four stripped exhaust manifold bolts. Let me show you what I'm working on. Okay, here's the cylinder head I'm working with. This is a 706 head, and it's going on a 6 liter LQ4 that I'm building. This thing had all kinds of problems. This spark plug was cross-threaded and had to be repaired. This exhaust manifold bolt had been broken off, and I fixed that. But then four exhaust manifold bolts were completely pulled out of the head and were stripped. And you can see this one, you can get down in there, I don't know how close I can get. Uh, it is completely smooth. The other three I've already repaired. So the reason I'm showing you this is I wanted to uh, show you how I repaired the head by repairing this particular whole repair process. And I wanted to do this in real time so that you would see that this isn't a five minute video that will take you all day. It'll be the exact time I do it, you can do it. Here are the tools that I'm going to be using. This is the time cert kit and how to replace this, this particular part. And it comes with the cert that you're going to use. It's like this. It's threaded inside and out. And it comes with the four bits that you would need to do the repair. The first is the correct size drill bit, a counterbore bit, a tap, and a driver. And this is all you need to insert this threaded insert into your head. You need to have a tap and die set so that you have a handle, which is what I've got here. Uh, I've got an tooth, old toothbrush used for cleaning and a bunch of Q-tips. In this case, I do not have compressed air or a vacuum at the workbench area to be able to get the shavings out of the way, so I'm going to use that to clean it up. I've got a little bit of oil and my cordless drill. But now that you know the parts you need, let's get started. Okay, to begin with, I used an instrument. In this case, I just used an ice pick to go into the hole to find the depth. Pull it out, and I can see that's how deep my hole is. So I took the drill bit that I'm going to be using, and I'm going to mark that depth. In this light, it's kind of hard, but right there, I placed a mark right here on the drill bit. It's in red, and that way I have a depth gauge on my bit so that I know I should go no deeper than that. So let's drill the hole out to that depth. That's it. That's the depth. And then I use my toothbrush to clean things off. Okay, now we're going to use our counterbore bit. It looks like this. Now this, you don't have to worry about the depth because the way the teeth in this are shaped, it can only go so far. So you're just cutting a ridge that's just below the surface here on the head so that this insert, uh, when it goes in, it's got a little ridge on the top. See that? And this will go underneath the surface or flush with the head of the flush with the top part of the metal here on the head. So make sure it's straight. And that's it. It doesn't have to be very deep, just deep enough for that to be below the surface. Now you're going to you'll be using your tap. You really don't need your drill at this point. Uh, I apply some oil to my bit. 
my tap there just to not only make the cutting a little easier but also to trap some of those uh, metal particles that we're going to create. And again, you just want to make sure you're being straight. Now we do, I can look in there and see some metal, metal particles now. So I'm going to spray some of this uh, cutting fluid just on the end. Kind of helps make it a little sticky. And just kind of run it down through there. And pull out a lot of those particles. Just to kind of keep the hole clean. You're going to be doing that quite a bit as you cut. Now you don't want to make a single cut all the way in. We'll go in maybe a third half of the way, depending on how it's going. And then uh, we'll pull it out, clean the metal particles out, and then continue. Because otherwise the particles falling into the hole is going to make it difficult for this tap to pass all the way through. You don't have to worry about marking how deep you're going either, because the tap, because you're doing it by hand, can only go so far. You just want to start it gently, make sure you're going at a 90 degree angle. And I do a little turn and go back, turn and back, just to kind of help it to loosen those particles of the shavings that we're breaking off. This whole process doesn't take long. You just need to use good quality tools and this uh, cert tool is uh, has worked out really well and you can buy these inserts separately so the price of the tool itself isn't exactly cheap I think this was around close to a hundred dollars but uh, the time it would take you to drive this to a machine shop and uh, go back pick it up pay for it uh, it would cost a lot more than what you're paying for this kit. Okay. okay, I'm going to back this out. I'm going to clean this off. Clean those particles off that bit because they're stuck to it. And we have another Q-tip. And it pulls out a lot of metal particles. You may have to use several. In fact, I've got a whole stack of these little uh, Q-tips just for this purpose. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to clean out as many as possible for now. You're going to create more. I just want to get them out of the way of the threads we've already created so we don't mess those up by any means. A little bit more oil on my bit. My tap I should say. And let's go back in. So the threads we've already made it goes through nicely. And we start cutting some more. The tap will only go so far in. You can't go too far. Spray a little bit of this in there. That seems to be the bottom of the hole right there. So 
take it out now. Clean all those metal shavings off. Okay. And insert the driver bit in now. And the driver, I have it marked with a piece of tape, not so that it doesn't go too far, but just so I know the depth of this is correct for the depth of the hole. That way I know when I've reached the depth I want to go and stop advancing it before I pull it back out. But again, before we do that, we need to clean this hole out. There's a lot of shavings in there. A lot of stuff, so we want to get all that out. You have compressed air, that would be nice. Even a shot bag, that with a small attachment, that's probably good enough as well. This works, it's just more tedious. Now the insert that you're going to put in there doesn't actually go all the way to the bottom of this hole that you've drilled. Uh, it's threaded all the way, but the the cert itself is, is considerably shorter, maybe half the depth. Okay. Now when you insert it on the end of the the driver, it's not going to go all the way. On. See, it gets maybe halfway and it starts getting tighter. That's because this end is slightly smaller or more narrow than the top. And that's so it can help to drive it in. So that when you get it to where the head of this is in this recessed ridge, the tap can advance through it. It tightens it to the hole and allows you to back it out. At that point, I just continue on and drive the put the driver all the way in to, real, to where I've measured here at the tape and then back it out. The, the bit, the driver is we're almost there. The bit is just about in. It's now in and it's flush. It's tightening up a little bit. Just keep advancing it slowly. Now it's getting a little easier, so it's the driver has pushed through the insert. Now we're touching the tape. And it's bottoming out. So it's gone as far as it can go. Now let's just back it out. The insert is in place, it's flush with the head, and got a manifold bolt, let's try it out. Let's first use another Q-tip just to be sure there's nothing on the inside here. There's not. Now before I put this all the way down, let me show you. Now this exhaust manifold bolt, again I measured the depth of the hole and I made a red mark. That's the full depth of the hole right there. A little red mark with a Sharpie. 
So I'm going to advance this all the way down to that. It's a little bit more snug, 10 millimeter. Just advancing it until I make sure that that bolt will go as far as it's supposed to. It's down to the red right there. It's perfect. Okay, now we're just going to take it out. And you're done. The repair is done. And that's it. I know it sounds too easy to be true, but actually you saw it in real time. It's not rocket science. If I can do it, you can do it. I appreciate you watching the channel. I hope you learned something from it. Check the description below and I'll have links to the products I used to make this repair with. You should have the same result. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.